Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I was told that there is a forerunner with an e-locker at the yard and what we're going to try to do is pull it and try to flip it and make a quick buck. <laughs> So I wanted to make this video to show you guys what kinds of tools and what to pull when you guys find an e-locker at the yard. Um, I've already done this before on my 4Runner, so I have a little bit of experience. Um, but I'll show you guys some of the tools that I use and what you need to pull and even show you guys the process of what the junkyard looks like. And the reason why you might want something like this is if you want more traction and you know a locker is going to give you that. And the e-locker comes you know, factory equipped in some of the 4Runners. And it's relatively inexpensive to do this swap if you can find a good deal on an e-locker. Um, one thing that you'll have to note is most of the e-lockers that came on the 4Runners are 4.3 gear ratio. And a lot of the stock 4Runners are all 4.10, which means that you actually have to pull the front differential as well and swap that in. And to be honest, that's probably the worst part of the job is to get that out and put it back into your vehicle. Because, you know, there's so many things that kind of get in the way. Um, the rear differential itself is pretty simple and if you happen to have a 4.3 gear ratio already um, then the swap is really super simple and that's pretty much what happened with mine i had a 4.3 gear ratio 4runner already and i just had to swap the rear end if you don't know what your gear ratio is you can look at your door jam and if you have an a04a um, stamped on your sticker that means you have 4.3 gear ratio which means you only have to take the rear if you have a A03A or anything else, that means that you have a different gear ratio. You know, A03A is pretty common. If you have that, then you definitely have to go and get the front differential as well because you want to make sure that the front and the rear differential matches. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tools that I'm going to bring and then, um, you know, head on over to the yard and see what we can find. All right, guys, before you head out there, make sure you bring at least a decent amount of tools because you're going to be taking apart a lot of things. And what I like to bring is a 3 8 and a half inch ratchet. I like to bring my metric set here for the 3 8 um, You'll definitely need the 12 millimeter and the 10 to remove brake lines and brackets and things like that. Um, you'll, have, you'll want something like this in case you need to break apart the uh, drive shaft. Now you could be a douchebag and just take the whole drive shaft with you. But you know if somebody ends up needing that drive shaft, well you already took the other part. and. Pretty much useless so it's better just to disconnect it it's going to only take you a little bit more time and to disconnect the drive shaft you'll need a 14 millimeter like this and you'll need to hold the other side obviously with another 14. Um, i would recommend bringing some cutters so you can cut things that you don't need um, and then you'll need a 17 open end and a 19 open end and the associated sockets that go with the uh, half inch ratchet. Now you can do it the hard way and use the ratchet or you can bring the impact gun and all of these right here will take everything off. You'll just need these to hold the other side in case you know the nut spins on you or something. And then you know I bring a short 17, a short 19 and then the long ones and then if you want to drain the differential you bring a 24 with you and then for the front um, you actually have to take apart the CV axles and you're never going to know what, which axle nut is on there. Um, if it's OEM it's 35, if it's aftermarket it's going to be 36 so I just bring both just in case. Um, and obviously the impact gun and then in the front the differential is held on by this. Um, one of the bolts is a, it's a 12 millimeter hex so don't forget that. And then the rest is held on by 19, so you'll have to hold the 19 on top and then zip out the 19 um, on the front. There's two of them. It is a wise idea to probably keep the rest of the sockets in your vehicle, but you can probably just carry these into the yard and then leave the rest of these in your vehicle so you don't have to carry too much stuff. So let me share with you guys the plan of attack. And that is, you wanna remove the lower trailing arm. That's that 19 I was talking about. So you can just zip that out with the impact, the short socket, and put the 19 on that side. The top is the same, it's behind this uh, pan hard bar, you can't see it's a 17. So once you take those two off, um, you basically freed the axle. 
and then you can disconnect the pan hard bar probably not right here do it on the other side and then the shock mount is a 17 which is pretty simple and then all these brake lines are held on by 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters so you can just zip those off you know you can right under here to take this brake line off all you need to do is take apart this little like cotter pin looking thing right here once you pull that off you can slide this pin up and then that will just slide right off and it will just come off and you don't need to worry about cutting it or anything like that and then disconnect those brake lines and then the other side is the same thing there's going to be a couple that are kind of like this where they're clipped in what I would what I would suggest is just keep the ABS if it has ABS and just cut the line right here somewhere and then the e-locker itself is going to be held on by a bracket you know somewhere up top way over there and I'll show that in the video when we're uh, actually at the yard you should be able to pull the entire thing with the brakes still on there so just take the whole thing that way you don't make a mess and if you want to drain the differential it's a 24 like I mentioned earlier on the bottom so here's that drive shaft and like I mentioned you just need 14 millimeters just hold it on one side and I was mentioning earlier like what I said earlier you can probably just pull this shaft out and take the whole thing with it so you don't have to deal with that but like I mentioned if somebody needs this drive shaft you've taken apart the part that they need it's a two piece so it's better just to leave it in case somebody needs it guys don't be a douchebag in the yard and then the other thing that I forgot to mention is you need to take off the sway bar and the sway bar is just held on by these uh, 12 millimeters here on both sides and um, you can choose to take it off up here if you want but really you just need to take it off there and that whole thing will fall off and that's really all that's holding this uh, differential in so that's it let's go to the front so the front's a lot more complicated obviously um, but you'll want to take apart the drive shaft and then once you do that you have to take the CV axle off which means that you have to disconnect a whole bunch of things so there's an axle nut where the CV axle comes out to the front of the wheel so that's that 35 or 36 millimeter and then to take the CV out you have to actually disconnect the knuckle so what you can probably try to do is just take off the 14 millimeters down here and maybe you can lift it um, otherwise you may potentially need to take this tie rod end off um, you might not have to I think you might be able to have enough room to lift it and that way the CV will have a, a, enough room to kind of slide out of there and right under here you can kind of see it right there in the middle of the frame this guy right here um, is where that 12 millimeter hex goes so you just need to take that off that's the rear mount and then in the front you'll want to take off this 19 millimeter and that 19 millimeter and that'll kind of free the differential and then um, right above the differential there's a connection and you can get to it from the uh, driver's side you can reach into the wheel well and you can disconnect it or you know if you want to save time because that connector is not really going to be useful for anybody you can just cut it and you can cut the two hoses that are on there and then disconnect the uh, breather and then from there it's just a bunch of finagling and until you can get it out because it's kind of a pain because of that transmission flange it's in the way or the transmission hits the flange so if you can find a jack inside the vehicle you might be able to lift it from the transmission pan so you can get it a little bit higher and that might help you clear it so I'm not going to show you guys that but you can watch my other video on the Spartan locker install and you can see what I did there but that should be all you need to pull the front and rear diff and then I'll kind of give you the matching gears you'll need if you're doing this uh, e-locker swap. All right, guys, got my tools. Let's get going. What's up, guys? We're at a yard, and we're gonna see if this e-locker is really here. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's limited. Definitely not in the inventory. Uh, looks like somebody took the wheel off for us. There it is. So let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. And it definitely is a locker. So you guys can see right there that actuator. 
Yeah, it's the locker. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And we can actually pull it because they didn't put the wheel on the uh, drum. All right, here's where I go after that harness bracket that I was talking about earlier. So it's way up there and it's held on by a 12 millimeter uh, bolt. So just get yourself a 12 millimeter deep socket and a flex head uh, ratchet and you'll be able to get it out pretty easily. Um, the flex head is probably not necessary, but it makes it a little bit easier. And you know, you just take it off and that'll kind of free that harness. And one thing to make sure you get is the other side of the harness that'll make building your own wiring harness a little bit easier um, i actually forgot to do that here i accidentally just disconnected the harness and then you know took the bracket off and completely forgot about the other side so if you um, if you're doing this make sure you just cut the wire on the other side that way you keep the plug uh, because that plug is going to be helpful for later when you build your own harness Up to the drive shaft, huh? There you go. That's good. We'll be able to pull it out now. There it is. Nice. Nice work. Alright guys, up here you gotta make sure you take the switch. And then down here, somewhere, there's an ECU box. It's held in by a 10 millimeter. All right guys, it's in here. Barely fits. Eh, it fits pretty good. It was pretty heavy guys, not gonna lie. And we opted not to get the front diff because they wanted 250 for it and it is not worth 250. We got this guy for $201 total, which is dirt cheap. I think it's actually less than what I paid for the pick and pull one that I pulled. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take her home now. All right, you guys, we are back and I've unloaded all the tools. We got the axle home. So earlier I couldn't show you this box on the bottom, but it's held in like, I think it mounts like this. It's held in by this little 10 millimeter. You don't really need the plug, but I cut the plug anyways. Um, and you'll need this if you want to run the factory switch. And then you just take this factory switch and and you know what? I just realized I forgot something. I forgot the plug for this. Well, that's gonna suck. As you saw in the video, we didn't pull the front differential because, you know, for one, they wanted way too much money for it. So what might end up happening is we might hold this thing for a while until we can find the right buyer, you know, someone that has already 4.3 gear ratios. But if we can't find someone, then we may have to go and find another forerunner at another yard where, you know, they only want like $100 for it or something. That way we can have the matching front and rear. Now, if you are only able to find a rear and it's 4.3, you know, what you could opt to do is you can take out your old differential and pull the ring and pinion out and reset that ring and pinion into the new locker that you found. You're probably gonna have to pay some money to do that. Um, that's why a lot of people don't go that route. They just want the swap, you know, it's a lot easier. But that is definitely an option if you, you know, for some reason can't find a locker that matches your gear ratio. Alright guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more and have a nice day.